Acting President flags off distribution of food items to IDPs. Then Abakleki to Makodi, Makodi to Latvia. So I honestly don't know where this information is coming from that the South is, is left out. No geographical zone is excluded from the rail project. This reassurance is coming from the Transportation Minister. And federal government allays fears on concessioning of refineries. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News, reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. We'll now take you to Army Duguri Network Center, where Lami is standing by with details of the acting president's visit to Borno State. Hello, Lami. It's over to you. Acting president of the Sayemi Tribal Council, Aid Medigui, for the flag of, of federal government's intervention program for the next year. The food distribution program was launched at the Bekasi camp housing internally displaced persons from five local government areas of the state. Ahmed Gunu reports that the acting president restated the commitment of government to the provision of health care services, education, and livelihood support. Here is the report. As part of the emergency food intervention program, 30,000 metric tons of locally produced food items were procured for distribution to the states in the northeast, with Borno State allocated 50% of the commodities. Acting President Professor Yemi Osimba Jose. As we install and maintain security in the region, we must not lose sight of the need to provide social service, food, education, health care, shelter, as well as resettlement and livelihood support. Today, the federal government flags off what will be a quarterly grain distribution program for internally displaced persons. And by this, we are saying to our brothers and sisters in the Northeast that our country does not take their burdens lightly, and we are not blind to their difficulties. I'm particularly pleased to say that the grains that we will be distributing comprise, which comprise sorghum, grain, soybeans, and rice, are produced locally, they are produced here in Nigeria, by our own farmers will be a quarterly exercise and that the commodities will be taken to the doorsteps of the beneficiaries. The Vice President disclosed that vouchers will be used to ensure transparency, which will also serve as a data for future planning. He commended the state governors of the Northeast, especially Kashim Shetima, for their leadership role, as well as international donor agencies and the security operatives for their untiring efforts. Governor Kashim Shetima praised the courage of the acting president, Professor Yemi Osimbajo, who, despite one the evening attack on Maiduguri, did not change his itinerary, which he says was a demonstration of genuine leadership. Mr. Acting President Sir, we salute your good sense of business, your courage, patriotism, and passion for the Northeast. We must have shared your wisdom in proceeding for today's event. He reaffirmed the gratitude of the government and the people of Borno to the federal government, Dangote Foundation. UN agencies and other organizations for identifying with the people of the Northeast in their challenges. Director General Nema, Mustafa Yunus Amehaja, and the same executive chairman, Satomi Ahmed, applauded the food intervention program, saying it will go a long way in addressing the food security challenges in the Northeast. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And in the meantime, normalcy has been restored to some communities on the outskirts of Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, following. Wednesday evening's coordinated attacks and bomb explosions by Boko Haram terrorists who were repelled by the military. Naimuna Bugarba has a situation report. Sporadic firing of guns by the Boko Haram terrorist forced residents of Alijawari, Jidumri, and Jidari Polo to flee their homes for some hours, only to return that same night, while others were captured returning on Thursday early morning after the military massively mobilized to the areas and to repel the attacks in a gun duel, suicide bombers detonated their IEDs at different locations on Wednesday evening. A total of 13, including, including the suicide bombers, were killed, while 24 persons were injured. Normalcy 
normalcy has since been restored in the areas. Meanwhile, Governor Kashim Shetima has visited both scenes of the attacks and directed the erection of the IDP camp destroyed by the Boko Haram terrorists. He also promised to ensure the destroyed houses are reconstructed. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. And those are the trending stories on this end. It's back to Lore in Abuja. Many thanks, Lami, and we apologize for the poor audio from our Maiduguri Network Center. The acting president, Yemi Oshinbajo, says Nigeria will continue to play an active role in ECOWAS in order to address regional issues and explore resolutions in partnership with other member states. He said this while receiving the Togolese president, Foreign Nasimbe, at the presidential villa. Acting President Oshin Bajo congratulated Togolese president on his election as the chairman of ECOWAS and called for continued consultations on the issue of economic partnership agreement between ECOWAS and the European Union. President Nyasingbe expressed Togo's commitment to strengthening ties with Nigeria, given the country's role as an important player in the region. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, says there are no intentions by the federal government to concession refineries, but will engage reputable companies with the requisite financial and downstream capabilities to revamp them. He gave the clarification in Abuja while addressing newsmen. Mie Ogidi reports. Nigeria's daily petrol consumption is about 35 million liters while the refineries in the country produce only 6 million liters, thereby leading to trillions of naira being spent yearly on petrol importation by the federal government, as confirmed by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Emmanuel Kachuku. Um, the importation of petroleum products, um, even between January and December of this year, um, um, amount is about 20 million at, uh, metric tons and a total amount of 3.4 trillion air. This necessitated the federal government of Nigeria in April last year to place advertisement seeking financiers to fund, rehabilitate and jointly operate the refinery to increase their capacity utilization and not to transfer assets of any of the refineries to any eventual successful financier. The rehabilitation is to cost an estimated 1.2 billion US dollars. There isn't an issue of concession. We're not concessioning refineries. We're not selling equity. It is simply a financing package. In terms of who wins the the, uh, the refining, sorry, the, the financing uh, awards, that is still work in progress. Um, uh, we have not received uh, from the technical committee their final reports on this, which the board will need to um, review and accept and then go for FEC approval and obviously engage uh, the National Assembly before we proceed with, uh, with some of this. Besides the repairs of the existing refineries, the federal government of Nigeria is also encouraging the private sector to come up with greenfield refineries to bridge the huge petrol consumption deficit in the country. Mie Ogidi, NTN News. And turning our attention now to the legislature, the Senate has rejected the proposed marginal increase in fuel price intended to fund road repairs across the country. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zayanu reports that the decision followed the consideration of a report in the Federal Road Funds Bill 2017 sponsored by Senator Kabiru Gaya. The Senate described it as politically and economically unviable to contemplate any price increase in fuel amid economic recession. As soon as the report of the Committee on Works came up for consideration, therefore, Senator Kabiru Gaya had to step it down for further consultations. The core of the road fund solution is the concept that some of the inefficiency and unpredictable funding and by extension planning can be mitigated by extracting additional funds from those that use the road assets in the form of user-based charges. While presiding, Deputy Senate President Iki Ikoremadu said other alternative ways of funding that will not impose hardship on Nigerians should be explored. What we are trying to do is to find other sources of funding our road infrastructure, which is the standard all over the world. We have no intention whatsoever to increase the pump price, not even with this bill, not any other bill. The Witness Protection Program Bill 2017 was also read third time and passed after a clause-by-clause -clause consideration. The objective of the bill, briefly, 
the establishment and operation of a witness protection program to enable certain persons to receive protection in relation to certain information, evidence, or other assistance rendered, rendered to law enforcement agencies during inquiries. Deputy Senate President said that securing the bill is for protection and delivery of justice and thank late Senator Ishaka Adeleke for bringing the bill, which he said will be dedicated in his memory. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NT News. And still staying with the legislature, the House of Representatives is considering a bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Institute of Agriculturists. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Mpo reports that the bill seeks to bring all agricultural institutes under one umbrella. Agricultural institutes are major drivers of any vibrant agroeconomy. It is in lieu of this that the House of Representatives is considering a bill to establish an institute that will regulate and strengthen all agricultural professions in Nigeria. Representatives Mohamed Mungono and Munir Dan Agundi are the sponsors of the bill. Is to enact or bring into being an institute that will regulate the practice of agriculture among the multifaceted disciplines of our uh, the profession. Decline in the level of enrollment in agriculture in tertiary institutions. While another bill for the amendment of the Agricultural Mechanized Act to provide for efficient repairs and maintenance of agricultural equipment, sponsored by Representative Sajjo Sogun, was also passed for second reading. When these plants are taken, they go to the field to work and they come back and they are jumped in the facility. A bill for an act to expand and facilitate the development of Nigeria's capital market, sponsored by Representative Yusuf Ayo Tajuddin from Kogi State, was passed for second reading. The need to check the increasing cases of kidnapping in Kaduna and all states in Nigeria and to invite all heads of security agencies to brief the House on the issue, moved by Representative Yakubu Omar Balde, was adopted. These people kidnap because they are looking for money. And when ransoms are paid, what happened is that they use that money to buy more sophisticated weapons. Is that we should have a substantive committee of the house to be attending to that particular issue until we have a respite. Let it be added onto the prayers of the motion that um, the house is summoning them on Tuesday by 11 a.m. Representative Emma Ogene moved that government and security agencies should intervene in the recent reports credited to some youths in the north that Igbos living in the north should leave before 1st of October this year. Representative Mohammed Nuri Sharif from Borno State moved that government should provide portable water, medications and other relief materials for internally displaced persons in Banki Town, Bama local government area of Borno State. The House received seven reports from its Committee on Health Institutions from the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Security heightened as Britain streamed to the polls for the third time in two years. Here is Talatu Ezerike with the details. The call for a snap election this Thursday by UK's Prime Minister Theresa May caught the international community by surprise as another election was not due until 2020, especially when the Prime Minister pledged a different fora not to call for early election. Conservative Theresa May and Labour Jeremy Corbyn cast their votes after seven weeks of campaign. The two had clashed on issues of security and the respective vision of post-Brexit Britain. The election for Labour Jeremy Corbyn was an opportunity to end the Conservative government's austerity agenda and build a just society. But Conservative Theresa May sees differently as she promised voters a Brexit boost of billions of pounds on state investment to support business, transport and housing. Coming on board when David Cameron resigned mid-term in June 2016 after losing the Brexit referendum, her victory at the poll will hand her personal mandate and the strength to negotiate Brexit from personal conviction. More than 2,700 candidates are vying for 533 seats 
and England out of the UK's total seats of 650. Counting is expected to take place overnight with the winners in each constituency declared in the early hour of Friday. In 2015, the Conservatives won 331 out of the 650 seats. Talat Ezeriki, NTA News. And joining me in the studio to examine issues around the UK election is a professor of political science, international relations and security studies, Leonard Foy. It's nice to have you on the news tonight. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Brexit is the defining issue of the election. How do you think it will work out under Theresa May as Prime Minister or a post-Brexit UK under the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn? Whatever it takes, whether the Conservative or the Labour wins tonight or early morning Friday, it's going to be a defining moment for United Kingdom. Brexit has been one of the major issue, contending issue in the United Kingdom. And the Conservative or the Labour have different views on what it takes. Whatever it takes, it will impact seriously on the economy of the United Kingdom. How will the outcome of the election impact on the UK-Nigeria relations? Uh, it's going to impact on uh, Nigeria-UK relations in terms of whether UK will be a suitable place for people to go and invest or whether uh, uh, their foreign policy would be attractive to uh, uh, the team countries around the Commonwealth and also uh, uh, around Asia and uh, the United States. Definitely what is happening in the United uh, States is going to affect even the European Union because it's a fight between uh, 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 contenders of nationalism and contenders of globalization. While the conservative is talking about nationalization, the world is going global. We want to see what will play out, whether the issues of globalization or the issue of national nationality will take place. Because when you talk about Brexit, it means that UK is going to be on its own, its foreign policy is going to change, it's going to affect trade relations, it's going to affect education. In fact, it will affect every facet we of the economy. We uh, the turnout of the voters was very massive. What could have played out? Well, the turnout uh, uh, undoubtedly it's, uh, uh, is going to be massive because of the, 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 the awareness presented to uh, the timid population of the United Kingdom and the current security uh, situation within the United Kingdom and also the, the, the tendency that uh, the United Kingdom would want now. Initially when the Brexit thing came, it came like a surprise. But now the timid youths, the older generations are trying to pitch tent with whichever, part, uh, with whichever party comes into contention. So if the, if the Labour Party gets it, or the Conservative gets it, it's going to define their foreign policy, it's going to define the economy, it's going to open up the United Kingdom to the fact that it's going to be either a good place to invest or a place where people would begin to run away from. Thank you so much for your time. I've been speaking with Mr. Leonard Foy, Professor of Political Science, International Relations and Security Studies. And moving on now, you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. No group has a right to harass any citizen in any part of the country. A warning from the Inspector General of Police as he meets state commissioners of police. Details when we return. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn, and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel. 
and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. Rise up this morning, this morning, smile with the rising sun. no limit to what you can do with data with Nigeria's widest data network. It's amazing what you can make happen on MTN. This is my message to you. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah. Not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Have you seen the Opera Mini? Browse faster. Get the latest news. Download videos and extend your data so you can browse all day. Upgrade to Opera Mini. Download now for free. Hey, now who they here? My name now Mr. Shortcut. I demand my money. Now cheap cheap one, I they buy. Thumb that we sign. Now to buy cheap one. <laughs> hey, now who can keep on for my yard? I cheap building material where we take build my office. I think say I deserve money. Office building collapse. And fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, S-O-N, don't ready for action and say enough of pain, loss and wastage. And if you see product when no day correct, call the S-O-N office when near you. Or S-O-N app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. The Future Assured project of the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is carrying out free medical screening and distribution of food items at various IDP camps while ensuring the economic empowerment of women through training and skill acquisition. In recognition of her efforts, wives of governors have lent their voices and support. In Kogi State, we feel the impact of Future Assured, especially in women and children. The Future Assured program of Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Bahari, the wife of the president, has been very assuring and still reassuring in Sokoto State. It has impacted positively in the areas of humanity, especially women and children. Support the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing. Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect 
diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption, and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Welcome back. This is NTA Network News. The Code of Conduct Tribunal has reserved ruling on the no-case submission filed by the Senate President Bukola Saraki in his trial over alleged false declaration of assets after completing argument on the submission. Aliu Tukur has details. Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki urged the tribunal to dismiss the false asset declaration case against him on grounds that no prima facie case has been established. He told the tribunal that from the 18 count charge, he had not been linked in any way to the allegations against him. Counsel to the Senate President Kanu Agabi argued that the prosecution failed to establish the charges, and as such, there is no need for him to be ordered to enter his defense. He said throughout the prosecution's case, the reports of the investigation and the petitions were not made available to the tribunal for verification and that none of the petitioners were invited as witness in the charges against the defendant. Agabi said that the charges were founded on faceless petitions, therefore urged the tribunal to dismiss the charges in order to discourage writers of such petitions. Prosecution counsel Rotimi Jacobs insisted that a prima facie case has been established to warrant the defendant to be called upon by the tribunal to enter his defense. He drew the attention of the tribunal to some asset declaration forms of the defendant, adding that investigation has established false asset declaration. Rotimi Jacobs maintained that a person can be prosecuted even without a petition against him. He also told the tribunal that discharging the defendant on no case level will defeat the fight against corruption and the purpose of the tribunal. There is no way prosecution made out a case in any given situation that the defense will not file a no case submission. It has become the tradition. Really what we did for the defendants is to show that in each of those counts there are essential elements of the offense that were not proved. Chairman of the tribunal, Ladi Umar, announced that the tribunal will sit to decide on no case argument and that a date for ruling will be communicated to both parties once the ruling is ready. In Abuja, Aliu Tukur, NTA News. And now to security matters. The police has directed all state commissioners to be at alert to bring to order any threat or breach of law as no tribal or social group has the power to stop any citizen from carrying out his legal activities in any part of the country. The Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, gave the warning in Abuja at a meeting with all commissioners of police and higher ranks. Edino Justice has details. The IGP conference enables the security chiefs to review policing issues as they affect each state of the Federation. Ibrahim Idris, who spoke on the threat issued by some youths in the north and southeast of the country, warned the commissioners not to allow any group to take law into its hand. Anybody or any group, individual or group, that attempts to prevent any Nigerian you know, from carrying out his daily activities we have responsibility to ensure those guys are stopped by all means. He emphasized that a task force will be set up to check abuse of private spy plate numbers and use of sirens. IGP also gave an update on the Lagos school kidnap that about eight suspects have been arrested so far. We are going to flood those creeks, especially that Lagos axis, with these marine patrol boats. We have to take the security of these uh, children very seriously. You don't start a school where they can, somebody can park a boat, go off the boat, pick, enter the boat and just zoom into the, into the ocean. IGP assured the officers that the management is committed to the welfare of all police personnel, including their housing. Aiding of Justice, NTA News. The Nigerian diversity has been identified as a blessing and a means to achieving greatness and sustainable peace. 
This was the view expressed by a group of youths under the ages of Sustainable Nigerian Movement against the backdrop of the different tunes emanating from Ariwa Coalition of Youths and the group Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOB, in the southeastern part of the country. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garba Kudu reports. Against the backdrop of Nigeria's richness in cultural and ethnic diversity, a sustainable Nigerian movement says what Nigeria requires now is addressing its socio-economic challenges rather than propagating issues of disunity. In doing this, the group advised the Ariwa youth to be cautious in their utterances, while the group in the southeast should treat the path of initiated development strategies with national interest against secession. My brothers in the South East can be more strategic in ensure, in demanding all the time for these three hours, government after government. At some point, somebody will hearken to them. The group called on religious leaders to intervene in reawakening in the youth, national consciousness and togetherness, which will make Nigeria greater. Preach to them what the books of God talks about peaceful coexistence. Sustainable Nigeria movement is a network of Nigerians from different backgrounds. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunokudu, NTA News. The Nigerian Air Force has refuted an online media report alleging its involvement in a coup plot. A statement by the Air Force Director, Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Olatu Kumbo Adesonya, says it is mischievous for anyone to think that 18 years of uninterrupted democracy can be truncated. Air Commodore Adesonya reiterates that the Air Force is a highly professional and political service of the military focused on ensuring the safety of citizens and territorial integrity of Nigeria and believes in democratic values demonstrated with the deployment of troops to the Gambia to restore the people's mandate, therefore will not be involved in any attempt to dismantle the political structure in Nigeria. The federal government has reassured Nigerians that no zone would be excluded from the ongoing rail projects across the country. The Minister of Transportation, Chibuike Amechi, gave the assurance when he appeared before the Senate Committee on Local Foreign Debts. Correspondent Oninaya Kaluoka reports. The Minister of Transportation, Chibike Rutimi Amechi, was invited to explain whether or not the Southeast was excluded from the $5.8 billion loan request from China Exim Bank by the federal government for the construction of the standard gauge lines across the country. The eastern part for modernization is not part of it, and that you are in the process <coughs> of doing that. We live in a country where People are always suspicious of everything. And we are now at a point of seeing is believing. With a branch light at Bakliki, even from Aba, there's a branch line to Wiri. Then Abakliki to Makodi, Makodi to Lafia. So I honestly don't know where this information is coming from, that the South is, is left out. The minister was requested to explain the technical details of the proposed rail line. The committee members disapproved the plan for the construction of railway university by the Chinese company. Is that the best option for us, given the fact that we have so many universities already in Nigeria? We want to maintain our own locomotives ourselves. Other issues raised by the committee include speed limit of the Abuja Kaduna standard gauge line, arrival of new locomotive. The committee called for a viability studies for the concessioning and modernization of the railway. From the National Assembly in Abuja, Oyinaya Kalu Oka, NTA News. The 2017 Hajj Fair has attracted interest of the National Assembly with Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs mandated to hold public hearing with National Hajj Commission of Nigeria and tour operators involved in the Hajj. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu has details of the interaction. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria has fixed about 1.6 million naira as this year's Hajj Fair for Nigerian intended pilgrims. 
This led to presentation of motions on the floor of the two chambers of the National Assembly seeking for review of the fair downwards against the backdrop of the country's current economic situation. Based on the Senate resolution on the matter, the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs invited the Commission's Chairman, Abdullah Mukhtar Mohammed, who presented a breakdown of the components of the Hajj Fair, stating that the exchange rate of Naira to dollar fixed at 305 Naira as the main reason. What we care for is to ensure that the place is conducive, is accessible, and it meets the minimum standards set by the Saudi government as well as by the Commission. Chairman of the Senate Committee, Monsoret Sumono, said the committee seeks to have lower hajj fare for Nigerian intended pilgrims and to know the difference of charges between private hajj operators and the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. And be able to tell Nigerians whether the fare is going to be reduced, which we hope is going to be reduced. The committee is expected to conduct further investigation on the matter with the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria and at least three tour operators alongside their association's leadership to appear before it. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. The Speaker, House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has hosted Muslim legislators from the North, Central and South East to iftar the breaking of fast. Rabbi Musa reports that the gathering was a forum for practical demonstration of Nigeria's sense of unity in nation building, cutting across religious and ethnic inclinations. The atmosphere offered the legislators an avenue to enjoy a sumptuous meal with socialization away from the regular deliberations of the House with chief legislators' procedures. The speaker, in the spirit of Ramadan, implored Nigerians to pray for their leaders for the good of the country. Use this opportunity to pray for leadership, um, beginning from Mr. President to the Vice President, down to the lowest rung of the ladder of authority in this country. Pray also for uh, the National Assembly. The speaker is expected to host some other groups for the iftar from various parts of the country and socio-political associations. Muslims have been challenged to extend the lessons of Ramadan in all areas of endeavor for ideal and prosperous society. Speakers at the 2017 State House Ramadan Lecture threw the challenge welcome mending on Ramadan, a time for sober reflection. Aliyu Aisha Buhari was in attendance. The 2017 State House Ramadan Lecture was meant to reawaken the consciousness of Muslim Ummah on their rights and obligations in promoting righteousness in accordance with the teachings of Islam for a better society. The program, which was under the chairmanship of the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sahara Abubakar III, represented by Dr. Tukuru Bele Ngawa Magajara Finkesina, attracted the participation of Islamic scholars, the academia, as well as traditional rulers. They dwelled extensively on the topics comprising the virtues of Ramadan as a panacea for corruption and discipline in Nigeria, right of wives, and obligation of husband in marriage, as well as the ideal Muslim parent and the challenges of nation building. If you ask me one question, what brings about divorce? I will say our wives fail to give us their, our rights and we fail to give them their rights. That is the reality of the situation. We reach a situation that I feel I am the husband and the mother of the house. I must be obeyed. But when it comes to taking care of my wife, I fail in doing that. And this is the opportunity that Allah has given us for a rethink and for a change. It's not only by abstaining from eating, drinking, and social intercourse, but to really practice the deen of Islam. The wife of the governor of Kebi State, Zainab Bagudu, lent her voice in calling on Muslim women, especially women, to take the challenge of maintaining a disciplined and moral society. On behalf of the organization of this lecture, I'd like to say thank you to all the Islamic organizations 
the learner, the learner, for increasing us in knowledge today, for adding to our knowledge, and I hope that we all gain something positive from it. Special prayer was offered by the Islamic scholars and other Muslim Ummah headed by Sheikh Isa Ali Rupantani for the speedy recovery of President Muhammad Buhari and for the peace and development of Nigeria. From the State House, Ali Kabir, NTA News. For more on lessons of Ramadan and other reports, let's join Ademola in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Ademola. And welcome to Lagos. The need to draw a line between tolerance and accommodation on religious issues with a view to fostering mutual understanding in the country was the crux of this year's Yusuf Jibo Ramadan lecture. Lee Ledike reports that the event was organized by the NTA Lagos Network Center Muslim Community. The annual Yusuf Jibo Ramadan lecture featured two guest lecturers who spoke on Muslim and religious tolerance as well as the negative impact of social media on Nigerian youth. You do good to your neighbor that is near, your neighbor that is fun. You do good to the Yatamari orphans. You do good to uh, Ibn Sabi. Who is Ibn Sabi? You now see that the culture in Islam is that of accommodation and not toleration. The Imam of NTA Channel 10 Muslim Community, Ustaz Harun Tani, decried the level of social moral decadence, which he said is attributable to the negative use of social media by youths the world over. We construct the content of social media, but in a way, that content constructs us. It made us. There are goodwill messages from the Director General NTA, who was represented by the Executive Director Marketing, Sally Dembos. Everybody should be invited aboard, one at least to listen to the Ramadan lecture, and also to talk about the individual who are trying to immortalize, so that we we'll also borrow a leaf from the type of life that he, he left. He touched so many lives, like you had here. And uh, such legacy is what we are trying to project. Special prayers were also offered by Islamic scholars for peaceful coexistence in the country. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Experts in aviation have identified Nigeria as one of the African countries with huge potential for passenger and cargo traffic growth, highlighting the viability of investment in aircraft. The event was a workshop on aircraft as viable investment alternative organized in Lagos by some private concerns. Jane Ujuku has the report. The conference, which brought together stakeholders, including the regulators, the financing companies, insurance and policy, and opinion leaders, provided a platform to x-ray the prospect, challenges, and the way forward for a vibrant aviation sector one which will usher in profitability for airline operators and a better deal for the passengers. The essence is when you look at it, if as this works, then we can invest in aircraft, then we'll be able to give our airline operators aircraft at a cheaper rate and that will bring down their cost of operation. We're a securities exchange and we believe that when the financing does start, a lot of the investors will be looking for secondary value. Sometimes they might want to sell down because it's a long-term investment. A lot of these airplanes have a lot of new designs, new technologies. Um, so it's partly bringing and leveraging uh, various institutions across the world. Minister of Information and Culture al Haji Lai Mohammed was represented by Mr. Chidi Uluka, while Minister of State for Aviation Hadi Sreka was also represented by Mrs. Abodrin. That's a very good, good deal for the Nigerian traveling public if we're able to get down all these aircraft in Nigeria. And they're quite durable and uh, cost-effective. This just comes right in the middle of the reforms and um, public-private sector dialogue uh, needs to continue. Uh, Nigeria is a vast market for aviation. There were presentations on the market environment, aircraft value and aircraft finance environment. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. Nigeria as a nation has potentials to boost economy 
through culture and tourism. This was re-echoed at a seminar on information communication technology and finance as catalyst for tourism and culture in a diversified economy in Lagos. It was organized by Wakabout Africa as part of its fifth anniversary conference in Lagos. Today's Haiki reports. At this forum, diversification was identified as a way out. Tourism and cultural rejuvenation are among such suggestions. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who was represented, noted that this present administration is set to exploit these areas, even in collaborating with other organizations to achieve breakthroughs. He said the advent of the ICT has not only made the world a global village, but rather a village square, and the use of the ICT for tourism will be supported. There is so many tourist force in this country, so many tourist articles, so many tourist uh, materials that we have not really explored. We can therefore highlight how the ICT can improve the culture and tourism potentials so that as government we focus to make this industry to become very active to find ICT as an endeavor. Organizers of the seminar said the lecture is to stimulate stakeholders, government, and other interest groups on how the nation's tourism and culture can be harnessed. We have the technological know-how and ability to develop ourselves to show that the, the black man can also technologically compete with the white man. And the next better alternative business that is available for Nigerian economy apart from oil is tourism. Other discussants noted that the need has come for not only government but individuals financial institutions to invest in tourism. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news continues from Abuja. Stay with us. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita. Prepare to win. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. <laughs> Here's your order. I think this is not exactly what we ordered. I ordered a Coca-Cola Zero. No problem. I can give you zero calories, zero sugar, and a great Coca-Cola taste. Here's the Coca-Cola Zero you ordered. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, you still look like you need a Coca-Cola. Why oh, no. don't you stick inside your bag? Enjoy. Reorganized. Trained. And fully equipped. We are the new improved Nigeria police force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria police force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive, be security conscious, join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria police force, Force Public Relations Department. 
welcome back. Many thanks for rejoining us in Abuja. And talking business, Nigeria to begin global offering of its first diaspora bonds as crude oil prices scale up Thursday. Let's join Muflang Dakok for details of these and more on Business News. Hello there, it's good to have you join me on Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria says the country plans to sell 323.66 billion naira of short-dated treasury bills at an auction on June 14. The bank says it plans to sell 39 billion naira of three-month notes, 23.02 billion naira of six-month bills, and 174.64 billion naira of one-year bills. The role of financial institutions in the transfer of illicit financial funds has been condemned while Nigeria and other African countries are joining forces to promote cooperation in combating the trend. Business News sought to find out ways to recover such funds and how they can be used for sustainable socio-economic development. Number one is that we must have the legislation. Now we are, uh, we, we are coming up with a mutual assistance in criminal matters uh, uh, bill. You know, we are trying to pursue that thing to conclusion. Meanwhile, crude oil prices edged up on Thursday after hitting one month lows Wednesday. Brent crude increased by 43 cents at $48.49 a barrel, having fallen by 4% on Wednesday, while U.S. crude rose by 38 cents to $46.10 a barrel. Nigeria is set to commence a global offering of its first diaspora bond. The Securities and Exchange Commission says Nigeria has filed a registration statement for the bond with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Applications will be made for the bonds to be admitted to the UK listing authority and to the London Stock Exchange PLC. Next is a quick look at closing figures of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which closed on a positive note today. The All Share Index appreciated by 0.77% while market capitalization stood at over 11 trillion naira. The stock market concludes business news at this time. Thanks for watching. I am Muplang Dakok. Thank you, Muflang. And sports is next on our lineup after this timeout. Join us again. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre qualification of made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAPDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAPDAC in reading the country of pet drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. The program is a very laudable achievement on the part of the federal government and state government. Since the commencement of the program, the children are really doing fine. The vendors are wonderful. In fact, they are doing a good job. They usually come to school on time. They serve the children, they serve the puppies. The program has really helped the children because there are some puppies, they don't have access to balanced diet. With the commencement of this program, many lives have been touched. To have easy access to balanced diet, it has really helped the children a lot. Welcome back, and now sports. Coach Gernot Rowe assures on Super Eagles' victory against Bafana Bafana Saturday in Uyo as Team Nigeria prepares for 2017 World Taekwondo Championships in South Korea. 
Tamara Ibiwe brings us more on sports updates. Super Eagles technical advisor Gennot Rowe has assured Nigerians of victory.